the first books that I read that really shook my worldview, Limits to Growth in 1972. And I suddenly realized that the world was going to change profoundly, that the world in which I had been brought up, that all the expectations that I had developed about how the world is, all of that was like quicksand that it was unsustainable. It could not be maintained into the indefinite future. Young people today are growing up with a similar realization relative to climate change. It, it alters your entire worldview once you realize that the way we're living right now is a historic anomaly and it can't continue. Somehow, for years and years, I had this conversation in my mind and the word energy was not part of that conversation until 1998 when I read an article in Scientific American called The End of Cheap Oil. That world oil production could peak and begin to decline around the year 2010. Suddenly, limits to growth had an expiration date. Also, this article made me forcibly aware of just how important energy is to our modern way of life. This chart here has some red bars. Those are a record of rates of discovery of new oil in the US. And this is one of the clues that led Hubbard to make his forecast. He saw that discovery of oil in the US had peaked in 1930 or thereabouts and had, and had generally been declining since then. Global oil discoveries have been declining since the early 1960s, since around 1964 or 1965. So remember, in the US, there was about a 40-year time lag between peak of discovery and peak of production, from 1930 to 1970. And here we are with global oil discoveries peaking well over 40 years ago. As we saw, every oil field goes through a peak and decline, and aggregates of oil fields do too. And the most important thing to remember about this is the big oil fields tend to be found first. This is not always the case, but usually we find the big ones first for fairly obvious reasons. They're larger in geographic extent, so even if you're out there poking holes in the ground randomly, you're much more likely to find the big ones first. The red bars are countries, the number of countries, that are seeing expanding production. The blue bars are countries that are seeing declining production. As you can see, back in the 1960s, the red bars were winning. And, and these days, it's, it's the reverse. The, uh, the decliners have caught up and are taking the lead. Even the Wall Street Journal is starting to make pronouncements like this in just February this year. Shortage of oil could be a real problem for the world in a fairly short period of time. What are they talking about fairly short between now and 2015? And the UK Industry Task Force on Peak Oil and Energy Security reached a similar conclusion. This is, this is a task force headed by people like Sir Richard Branson, the CEO of Virgin Airlines. These are not uh, environmental wackos. These are uh, some of the major industrialists of Britain who have come together to warn the British government about a problem that the British government up to this point has been completely ignoring, saying that peak oil will not be a problem anytime soon. The reality today is that crude oil production has been essentially flat since about 2005, even in the context of rising, and in some years, dramatically rising, oil prices. A simple uh, economics 101 would suggest if oil prices are rising, countries that produce oil are going to want to cash in on that fact and bring as much oil to market as they possibly can. Well, it didn't happen. During those years from 2005 through the middle of 2008, even as the price went up to almost $150 in US dollars per barrel, in July 2008, actual production barely budged in response. The uh, International Energy Agency, or IEA, has recently come forward to say that non-OPEC crude oil production could peak by 2010. Now take a good look at this graph. Non-OPEC crude oil production peaked in 2004. That's six years ago. And now, the IEA is just getting around to telling us that it might happen this year. 
So those governments that are waiting around for the IEA to warn them that global peak oil might happen any day now are being rather foolish, I believe, because the IEA is being overly conservative and cautious in sounding the warning that it was put here to sound. As recently as 1998, the price of oil was $12 a barrel.